Today, Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer shared how the city beautiful is future ready. We want it to be, and I think we are the most sustainable city in the southeast United States. We own the utility, and we are really working on increasing our solar. So the city beautiful that's getting smarter is also a compassionate city. In fact, one of its key priorities is to ensure that all of the needs of all of its citizens are met. This means increased mobility options and clean, affordable energy. Hola! My name is Sharana Barnes and I'm a community leader of District 6. The reason why I got involved in organizing for the people in my community is because things were actually happening to me and I was seeking answers. And like, I know that I'm not the only one that's going through this. As an OUC customer, my experience has not been a great one. I say I hadn't gotten a bill in probably six years that was under $250. My, one of my highest bills from OUC was like $490 and that was in one month. And if you ask anybody around here, their bill is high, it's absurd, it's ridiculous. I don't even have like all this extravagant stuff hooked up. I have a refrigerator, I have a microwave, I have gas, stoves. So how? I had gotten behind and I was seeking for help. I need help to pay my bills. Oh, you see me saying, oh, we're gonna reach out to the people. We're not gonna, you know, just shut them off, leave them in the dark. We're gonna make sure that we come up with a plan that, that have them not be shut off, but we can work with them. So I end up on a Power Pass program that's supposed to help you save energy. And it wasn't even six months now. My lights have been cut off for a total of eight times. Energy access is, is very important for us here in Florida as compared to probably several other states. Those in fence line communities in Florida who do not have access to reliable, affordable, clean energy for air conditioning um, or for anything else, then that becomes a problem for their health. Climate change will affect those communities even more. They have no recourse to, to mitigate the effects of it, and they're the ones that suffer the more serious consequences. It left me with disappointment, worrying, and, 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 and not understanding. What do I do next? I have children. I get one income a month. This is the reason why I'm speaking on it today, because it's absurd to have people still worrying about if my, my light's going to be on for my kids to get up and get on a laptop in the morning to go to school. Is my light's going to be on so my kids can have the food chilled enough so I can get it cooked and they can eat. It should not be hard to imagine that somebody who's um, electricity, for example, has been shut off, will face anxiety and depression. And as we know from the medical literature, directly affects your physical health. Uh, every day, I wake up today, every day, to see if my lights are cut off. It may 
work for their businesses or it may work for corporations, but it's not working for residents. Especially for vulnerable communities, energy equity is important. Energy efficiency is a low cost resource that can not only save ratepayers money, but it prevents energy from being wasted, which means it can reduce CO2 emissions. You as an energy company, you have all the power to release but we should have say so because we need that power in order to live. If there was cap on prices of electricity or housing going up and up and up and up and always going up where somebody can't afford it, that would be a perfect future. People won't have to worry about water. People won't have to worry about lights perfect future to me. <laughs>